Welcome back to KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. The images, they're astounding. We saw so much devastation from the air after those March floods. In some cases, it helped victims see exactly what they had left of their homes. And we certainly saw damage of roads throughout eastern Nebraska and western Iowa. It's just amazing. Nebraska Department of Transportation used the aircraft to help survey the damaged and flood ravaged road. And with us now is John Starr. He's engineering tech leader for the NDOT. Thanks, John, for being here today. First yeah, off, thank we, you. We talk about the we talk about the use of drones. How would you use them in the March floods? So yeah, thinking back to the March floods, you know things evolved very rapidly. Um, obviously, was was major impacts uh, to Nebraska. Um, so we, as an agency, needed to make some decisions um, very fast to see you know what is the damage and and what can we do to mitigate the damage and get these roads back open. So um, to us, you know, drones were a tool that we have in our toolbox. Um, you know, at the foundational level, they're basically uh, no more than a flying camera, right? So we've been using cameras for years. So this allowed us to um, deploy these drones out, in some cases, into um, areas that were really impassable by any other means, and allowed us to gather um, high-resolution photographs, high-resolution um, video, which then kind of twofold allowed our communications team to let the public know what was going on. Um, but on the flip side, we were able to leverage that information operationally um, to make uh, more informed and more rapid decisions. How do you, I mean, do you just sit there and say, I, I, first of all, do you have a bunch of, I assume you have a number of drones available. You know, I wouldn't say we have a bunch. Um, mm -hmm. At that time, we, we only had a couple, and we had yeah. a couple pilots. Um, Seemed so, like you were everywhere. So we organized <laughs> um, and did the best we could to move around and, and get things taken care of. And so when you put them up, what were you looking for? Yeah, so mainly, you know, again, if it was a road that was impassable, we were, we were shooting, you know, the whole road or areas of um, the bridges. Um, but to kind of dive down into the detail a little deeper, um, you know, obviously a lot of structures um, were impacted and there were areas that we couldn't get to. So we were able to fly the drones close, you know, with the zoom high res cameras, be able to support the inspection activities. Um, so in some cases, recognizing whether or not that bridge was um, going to need replaced or, or could be rebuilt um, at an early time. Were you seeing it relative, and we were talking to Matt Wilbur earlier about real time. Do you see that in real time or is it something where the drone shoots it, records it, brings it back, and then it, there's a lag time? Uh, generally, yes, the record method. We did mm -hmm. have inspectors on site and sometimes they're kind of observing as you're going or looking at the data shortly after you capture it. Um, but generally it was capturing data and letting some people analyze it back in the office. It was fascinating. I mean, were you pleased with how the drones performed and how they have impacted uh, public safety and, and information on roads? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the footage that you're seeing, um, you know, paints a really good picture, allows us to make those decisions. Um, you know, and, and again, these were not um, super high dollar drones. These are a commercial drone that mm -hmm. um, allowed us to get out there and, and gather this information very rapidly. And this is, uh, and we were talking before, um, this is, the floods is just kind of, is just one thing. Absolutely. Use of the drones. You, you guys are looking towards the future. What, you have some agreements. What are you looking at? Absolutely. So, you know, we're just kind of scratching the surface. This is truly an emerging technology um, mm -hmm. that I'm super excited about and super passionate about. Um, you know, again, at, at the foundational level, it's pretty simple. You know, you, you need to understand what data you want to collect and then you figure out what sensor you need and then you use a drone to fly that sensor around. Um, but these are highly sophisticated technologies. Um, you know, the ability to fly these autonomously, um, you know, with the sensors on there that allowed them to avoid conflicts and keep, you, keep the drone and the pilot out of trouble, um, you know, that's kind of where we're going. And as far as, you know, what you can do with them, I talked a lot about imagery and photographs um, and videos, mm -hmm. um, but we're looking more into leveraging the engineering data. So the ability to gather data, get it into a 3D environment and allow us to then um, analyze that data, use it with our other civil engineering technologies to then better assess damage, to use that for designing roads. Um, we've got a whole host of um, use cases we're pursuing, such as bridge inspections, high mass tower inspections, um, overhead sign inspections. Those are things that allow us to um, get workers off the road, we hope, which then makes that safer for the public and safer for the workers. And we're seeing kind of this, I mean, this is fascinating. This is some of the damage yeah. from the floods. Exactly what's happening here? So this is, you know, an example of what I was speaking about, mm -hmm. where this is obviously more than a photo and more than a video. Right. This is what I would call engineering data. So this is 3D data. We've, 
We're leveraging some of our engineering technologies to go in and, and analyze it. So we are doing measurements, um, determining you know how much volume you know would take to repair something like this. Um, this has to save money, has to save time. I mean, because yeah, you absolutely. I mean, normally, if you didn't have the drone, what would you do? What would this procedure be? Yeah, if we didn't have the drone, I mean, there's there's survey processes right. um, that can handle that. But what we're looking at is, you know, how can we do things more cost efficient? So um, that can be, you know, driven based on what does it cost, or or how many, or time that you can mm -hmm. deliver. So you know, normally survey crews, if you can even get into this area with a survey mm -hmm. crew. You know, would spend multiple people collecting data. Um, we see it going where you know a person or two can go out with a drone, rapidly collect that data, process this data into 3D information, and then carry it on downstream into our workflows. You mentioned uh, taking various sensors up. What kind of sensors? What what? Um, I guess I'm asking, what can a drone carry? What can they right. look for? Right. So. Um, Generally, you know, right now we're basically in, it in the camera stage, right? right? But, you know, you can, it, a multitude of cameras, you know, from RGB to multispectral to thermal. Mm -hmm. um, they're even, you know, now carrying LIDAR systems up into the air. Um, and then there's probably some I'm leaving off, obviously, but right. those are some examples of, of where it is. But it could go beyond that. I mean, I, I assume what are some of the some of the uses, I guess, agricultural? Uh, yeah, I, I know for sure agriculturally. I've, I've heard of, you know, people um, researching and taking um, sprayers out to spot spray and invasive species and, you know, evaluate plant health, um, things yeah. like that. We're, we're on, on, off obviously also looking um, a little bit into from an environmental perspective, we're doing some work with, um, you know, researching how we can predict where um, wetlands are going to be and right. how um, how wetlands are um, staying healthy over time, monitoring mm -hmm. the health of those. So right. we get a lot of different things going on. And you have a you have a relatively new partnership with the University of Nebraska. I mean, I yeah, know. we have a number of different research projects going on with the University of Nebraska. Mm -hmm. um, some of those related to, you know, assessing um, concretes with um, thermal cameras to understand, you know. Are there problems with the pavement that we can't see that we can detect? Um, that's one example. Mm -hmm. And what is your goal then? I mean, what, what in, in you work with these all the time. You use the technology. You've got what in a, in a nutshell. What is your goal for the drones? What do you see the future? Yeah. So you know, again, we kind of point to three different things. We we look at you know cost efficiency. We look at better quality data, and we look at safety. So anything we do with the technology, you know, we're evaluating, can we meet one of those criteria by doing it? Um, I think, you know, what's exciting to me is, you know, although we can do a lot with drones right now, it truly is an emerging technology. And, you know, I'm excited that we're laying the foundation um, so as opportunities arise over the next three to four years, that we'll be able to exploit those. Um, technology will definitely advance, and, you know, I'm just looking at where can we integrate it into our workflows now, and then how can we continue to leverage it. It's a very exciting time. John, thanks very yeah. much for well, joining us. thank you us very in. much. You bet. Well, you're still ahead. Are you looking at investing in a drone? We're going to have some things you have to know about. We'll be right back.